Okay, we're here. And the time's already clicking. Uh, when I was a surfer and when I was a diver, we used to sit at the shore and we used to say the sound of the waves was the sound of mama curling her toes. And it looks like mama needs a pedicure. <laughs> uh, it's pretty dirty. And, uh, and dirty words like politics, which are really not dirty words because politics are the way that uh, polite societies make decisions. Anyone who uses the word politics as a dirty word is someone who uses the word sex as a dirty word. They've got something to hide or they're ashamed of something. So don't be afraid of that, Carl. It's going to be OK. Now, speaking of politicians, uh, you know, this is the face of our tragedy. And I don't mean the distinguished gentleman from Louisiana, although if you know his record on cap and trade, some of you may disagree with that statement. But the face that we've put on it is this uh, oil-soaked pelican. I'm here today to talk to you about something else, a story that's remained untold. And it's this journey that we take together. There's this beautiful sheen of oil right now, disgusting, beautiful sheen lying across our ocean this razor-thin line that exists between the two worlds on our planet, the one of sky and the one of water. And they're amazing people. We call them mariners. And they catch pieces of air with rope and cloth, and they harness them, and they traveled our globe and made it smaller for centuries. And below the waves, they've left their footprints. They've left shipwrecks, these monuments of technology, these incredible achievements of engineering and of daring that helped us bring our planet closer together for good or for bad. These footprints all lie beneath the ocean. They're fragile remains. They chart our journey as a collective society, as a culture together to bring us to where we are today. And they lie directly in harm's way of this spill. But perhaps the most dangerous part of the spill is what we're gonna do now. We've already heard about the dangers of the dispersants. We've heard about the toxic uh, elements that are in the water column. These things directly attack these fragile wooden shipwrecks that date back hundreds of years, that have been safe inside the sand forever and really only been threatened by treasure hunters or salvers. Uh, rarely have I ever seen, actually, a shipwreck standing upright with its sails billowing and somebody like Davy Jones or you know, Johnny Depp coming out at it. Usually they do look a little bit more like this when we get to it. Now, we talk a lot about mineral management service today, but honestly, we owe a lot of our understanding of our maritime heritage to the mineral management service in the Gulf because the National Historic Preservation Act is the major cause for our discovery of new underwater submerged resources because there isn't a lot of funding left from the government anymore. At the same time that we've deregulated industry, we've destroyed funding to the NEH, we've destroyed funding to the NEA, the National Science Foundation is not helping us at all. And so really, most of the discoveries we've made in the Gulf in the last couple of years have happened as a result of cultural resource management surveys that are happening every time we're doing a pipeline work. We found uh, another wreck that's sitting inside there, and we have to actually investigate it. This has led to discoveries like the Mardi Gras wreck off of uh, Louisiana which lies in thousands of feet of water, but it tells us a, a telling time capsule what it was like in the War of 1812. We have wrecks that go all the way back to the age of exploration in the Gulf. The oldest wrecks in the Americas are there, uh, off of Padre Island and off of the western shore of Florida. Ships of exploration that explain how we got to where we are today, and even World War II vessels that are sitting there as well. Florida has done the best job at capitalizing upon these cultural resources, creating a series of underwater archaeological preserves where thanks to the Cousteau family who brought us the Aqualung you know, decades ago, we can all now go down and see these amazing museums in the sea. The most popular of them is the USS Massachusetts, a dreadnought battleship. Her turrets still graze the watery line, and you can dive down below and you can see what it was exactly like to see a capital ship of the period the weapon of war that was actually an economic engine that drove nations bankrupt before we went into the Cold War years. All of these wrecks are amazing treasure troves. They're artificial reefs that are phenomenal, uh, <laughs> phenomenal things to see, with verdant and abundant with coral life, small fishes. And we have no idea what's going to happen when the oil hits these things, gets trapped inside. Uh, the oiliest wreck we know of is the wreck of the USS Arizona. And the National Park Service underwater submerged unit today says that she still continues to weep oil for her survivors. But it's not just the shipwrecks. Actually, the Florida Panhandle, the coastline, used to be very, very different. And we don't know very much about the people who were there before we got here. And those, <laughs> those amazing footprints are still there, protected by water underneath the sea. Nobody's picked up these arrowheads. Nobody's gone after these ceramic vessels. Our, our keys to our prehistory are lying off the shore in the sandy gulf on the, on the western coast of Florida. Now, we don't have a good roadmap to how we're going to deal with this because all of these disaster plans that have brought in decay, uh, to bear here 
have been created for a very cold place, which is extremely important for the people who study, you know, the migration of people to the United States through uh, the Bering Strait. But, you know, for us, it's not really applicable where we're talking about the amazing amount of sand, the material that's there, that's lying in the, cl the cleanup. Now, there's no bulldozers allowed in these sites. We need to make sure that we're protecting them, we're, that we're carefully excavating as well when we do the cleanup work is the same way we would when we would excavate the wreck itself. Because you never know what's lying just below the surface of the sand, like these cannon that were discovered on the West Panhandle. And this is what we're talking about. These are the footprints of our journey. This is what stands in harm's way. And to me, it's a great risk because you don't know you're going forward as any mariner would tell you unless you know where you've been. I'd like to thank the members of the archeological community who gave me this opportunity and helped me with this information. Remember, there's a lot more there under the water than you think.